together with the uh, Niels Bohr Institute, yeah. and it aims to bring science closer to people in a non-serious environment. <laughs> and in a way that people can understand it. So this, the first cycle was organized uh, in a cocktail bar in around town, and uh, it was together with uh, Theory and Practice, this uh, organization that puts all lectures around Copenhagen on this platform on the web, and that you can check it up and attend. This one will be organized here, and will run every second Tuesday, from now on until July. There, then there will be a break, and then we'll come back in September with more scientists and so on. Tonight, uh, we'll have uh, Holger Beck Nielsen. He's a professor at Niels Bohr Institute. He has worked on all areas of physics. Physics. He has, he has been uh, uh, considered one of the fathers of string theory, this theory that tries to combine quantum mechanics with general relativity. So he, he knows what he's, what he's gonna talk about, you can, you can be assured of that. And today he's talk, gonna talk about many things, from uh, CERN to particle physics to the Higgs particle and the quest for finding a unified theory of nature. Later on, we'll have a, a, a small Q&A, and afterwards, Hjalte uh, Bestelmuller is gonna perform uh, here on stage and present us with his new um, new music project called Crayon. So I hope you enjoy and let's say, let's uh, applause Holger. <laughs> called Science or God, and uh, this is actually the name of a, of a nice book I, I should uh, make an uh, announcement for, uh, by Jørgensen and Jørgensen, but there's also a version now, it's called the, uh, Menesket and Maschine, uh, or Maschine. Uh, anyway, uh, and I will use this uh, uh, title uh, to somehow uh, classify the, the way I go forward in the talk a bit uh, about the, from the point of view of uh, the trouble that God might have with, um, with having um, the science. I mean, I think everybody feel, knows these kind of problems that you have a lot of no laws of nature and then God has to obey to that and then that means that he in some way don't have his nice freedom to be a loving God and so on or at least it seems that he can have some troubles of that sort. <laughs> and, uh, and I would use as a, a replacement for the plan of the talk uh, uh, a, a little picture uh, uh, by the artist of the Niels Bohr Institute. And this artist picture, uh, her name is Mette Hüst. And you are not supposed to understand what the picture means immediately, but uh, I will try to explain it and uh, go forward uh, among these uh, uh, talks. But you can see, if you are looking carefully, that there are, first of all, three things corresponding to sort of three sections of the talk, which I will talk about. And the first corresponds to the usual theory, and then come some of my own. And, uh, uh, and this hand, this is God's hand. So here, it is symbolized by the usual theory, as you may know that uh, it is, even if the laws of nature are so that when you start, things develop, at least there's a better chance for God to put the start properly, and then in principle he could arrange. And I think that's some kind of the way uh, you, you best allow God into the usual theory. And now you can look at the other ones and wonder what will go on for for poor God as we go along. And uh, 
And these three pictures, which are somehow the three parts of the talk I, I should talk about, um, uh, they are uh, the usual model, which is meaning the right one, and then come some of my own. Uh, and uh, there's first uh, mine and Nino Mir's complex action model, where we make a model also for the initial condition. And this really means now poor God has no place at all to be. So this is very bad for him. Uh, and then there is a random dynamics which says that the theory can be anything. And then God gets a lot of freedom because he can choose whatever theory he wants, it will come out more or less the same result in practice. So this would be uh, 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 the main thing. But let us start very uh, shortly by talking about uh, this theory, which is a known theory. Because uh, you should understand that I'm a, at least a mainly particle physicist. And uh, the, the picture of physics we have today, I think it, it's very well known. But it is good to, to remind you a little bit so that you know how we are thinking of it and what we are talking about. You could think of some material, a water, or you could think about anything, your own cells or your own body. And then you find inside that some molecules. And here we have some molecules. I have drawn a, a molecule which should be a water molecule. And there is an oxygen atom, and there are two hydrogen atoms. And in fact, it is so in, in, uh, in water. The in water molecule that they sit a little bit in such a, a, a relatively large angle, but they are not opposite to each other as in carbon dioxide. And then they have atoms, and then you look deeper into this molecule, then you find that there are some atoms, and there is a nucleus in that, and then you have electrons going around in some orbits. When I draw it like this, it is strictly speaking a little bit force atom. But I think nowadays you would rather think that in some mysterious way, which is only understandable in quantum mechanics, the electron is all around in the atom. And if you look for it, you will find it at a random place. But I think this is at least the picture. And the picture is you have a, a much small nucleus compared to the size of the orbit of the electron. Actually, it is very close to the ratio of the size of the sun to the size of some planet like Jupiter or something like that. So it's actually like a little model of our planet size system. Both mathematically and even in the size ratio is not so different. So the nucleus is much smaller. And then we can look at the nucleus. These are sort of symbolic uh, magnification glasses. So we can see how uh, things get magnified each time in order that we can see anything. And this nucleus consists of protons and neutrons, so-called nucleons. And these nucleons are together and in a size that more or less touches each other. So it looks like a, a clump of, of, of small balls or so. And then the, the nucleons, again, uh, they consist of quarks. And often one draws it as a little, uh, as a little bag, an MIT bag after Massachusetts Institute <laughs> of Technology. And, and in, for instance, a neutron, you have here two down quarks and one up quark. And then you may have extra pairs of quark and anti-quark. But the main thing is these so-called balanced quarks, which are for the neutron two down and one up, and for the proton two up and one down. And they are, occur in different colors. And there should be always a color balance. Otherwise, the uh, 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 the small bags are supposed not to form small bags, 
but there should always be, as a rule, a balance between the colors. So basically, one of each of the three colors, say blue, red, and here it is green, but it should be yellow, say. And, uh, and you could also have it uh, uh, that there could be a quark and an anti-quark with an anti-color, a red quark and then an anti-red, that would also be okay. And you can add here uh, a blue and an anti-blue or so. There are some balance rules. And this is because it was a problem when this quark model came up, essentially in my study time, um, that you classified a lot of particles as consisting of quarks in a very nice way. But there was one problem with the grade model. Where were the quarks? One looked for them and one didn't find them. So one was having a nice quark model, but quarks were not found. So one had a problem about that. And then one has invented the story, oh, they are confined. And this seems to work well. And there's a theory that they are bound together by gluons in a very complicated way, which mainly only computer understands. And that computer, or some people think, they more or less at least understand that there is a rule that these quarks are bound so that you never get a single quark out by itself. It's always accompanied by some partners according to some rule of balance of the color. And if you were a little nasty, then you would say, and oh, this is a bad thing about the quark theory, that you have to put such a story because you don't find it. Wasn't it better to give up completely the, the quark theory and say it's too bad? And it's a kind of crutch for the quark theory, but I think that this is allow crutch. We have sometimes to allow a little bit crutch of our theories and uh, it may still be right. But the wrong theory will in the long run be revealed probably that you have to give it so many crutches that it is completely hopeless for the model to walk around anymore. And, and, and that will be uh, the end of it. But here the, the, the QCD theory, the theory with the quark and the gluons, it's called QCD. Uh, it's called, it means quantum chromodynamics. And chromo means color because we have claimed they have colors. It has nothing to do with colors. It's just some names we give them. Uh, 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 so it distinguishes that there are sort of three types of B quark and three types of U quark and so on. And, uh, and then, now you have seen how we are going down and looking more, and one would then think now we should see what is inside the down quark, what is inside the up quark, and see that there is something. And very likely it could be that they are small strings, like some rubber band or so, uh, but really nobody knows because we have not been able to to put them apart, so to speak. We have not been able to hit the quarks so hard that we can see what is inside. So, so far, it is a secret for us what is inside the quarks, and we consider the quarks as the most elementary, the most fundamental so far. But it's a very good reason to believe that it will not remain necessarily like that but that you might find out some sort of insight or some other story behind the, the down quarks. And one thing could be that they were small rubber bands, small uh, so-called super strings because of a special property called super, uh, which uh, would strictly speaking imply that these quarks should be found together with some partners and they should a priori have the same mass. And if that was the case, then the superstring story is killed. But you can begin to give the superstring story also crutches, and then you may rescue it. <laughs> so this is uh, uh, the way. 